one of the, the songs which really opened my eyes, nobody would get this, I don't think, in a million years, was uh, Boney M. And I heard the Night Flight to Venus um, uh, album, the 12 inch, it was actually at my grandmother's house and my grandfather's house. And I just loved how it was a massive space journey. And it was like it was kind of disco pop, but it was very um, it it went into Russian kind of themes. It went into all sorts of different kind of um, melodies, and it was just beautiful. I mean, you had like synthetic voices, and it, it just kind of opened my mind uh, to all these different possibilities. But I don't know what they were. I've always kept art going through my life. And I've always tried to put art into everything I do anyway. I, I, I never really had any ambition to be um, a musician or anything involved in music, other than as a, a listener uh, and a fan of music. And I, um, I started, um, I think I was 15, no, I was 14, about 14, 15, when I, I borrowed um, a Spanish guitar from a neighbour of mine. And uh, he, he had it for about six months. Uh, his name was Jeremy Baker, and uh, he was proper into his athletics and stuff. And you know, he'd like run a million miles in a day and come back and go, "Well, I'm going to train tomorrow." And like, just tell me all about it. And he, he, I, I saw his guitar, and I guess what? Can I have a go at it? And he showed me this thing. He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll check this out." Well, I had this guitar at 15. Uh, I, I, I had it for that, for that night, and I remember like uh, it was a the action was this high. And it was nylon strings. It was like the most impossible guitar to play ever. Looking back on it, uh, but you know, I was there and I was trying to do these like you know things. I didn't know what chords were, so I was making up and stuff. I, I thought I'd create my own chords and stuff. Went back the next day, and he said, um, "Wow, you you're a genius." And I'm like, uh, uh, to be honest, realistically, I wasn't. I, I I just picked some stuff up in that right. But he said, "You've done more in one night. This guitar's been sat there for." Um, six months why don't you borrow it for two months because i'm going to give it back uh for another two months so i, I borrowed this acoustic you know, a spanish guitar for two months i spend every day playing it before that i, I spent most of my time uh, illustrating dra drawing art and you know um um macabre images like uh, inspired by eagle comics and stuff i was into my illustrating and uh, i still am uh, i'm all i'm all like doing like kids cartoon stuff now i'm, I'm um but in my teenage years, I was very into kind of um, more macabre kind of imagery uh, with, with my artwork and stuff. I was probably a very disturbed child. There's probably some psychological reason why I was drawing skulls everywhere. I'm sure most 15 year old kids did. After that. two months of playing this guitar, I had to hand it back and uh, I didn't want to. I, mean, I did. But then I thought, I need to buy a guitar. I mean, it all started, and then you do the whole kind of thing which. Uh, 15, 16 year old kids. My father had so much music, uh, like you know, Pink Floyd stuff playing. Um, there, was, there was, um, I was surrounded by so much music every day, and you had the Linson deck, an amazing kind of speaker system, all, all this kind of music, and it was like a kind of mishmash of so much music that I, I couldn't, I, I never had time to say, What's that? What, what's that? Who's that? I just wanted to listen, and, it, it, and uh, even Cliff Richard. All right. Um, I heard a lot of that stuff, and um, the, it, it was a bit, it, it was a mixture of everything. But I mainly got the rock kind of elements out of it. I think, um, and yeah, the performance people like say Toya and Adam and the Ants, as I said before. But um, there, was, there was lots of um, music which I, I found out years later what it was. So um, it, it, even like today, like I, I'd be. Um, checking something out on the, the internet and um, I do some research on some band from the 80s and 70s or earlier than that and I recognise a piece of music I, I know this so well no idea who the artist was until that point and I go I, I used to listen to that song so much that song means so much to me I, I didn't even have a name for the song so I, my relationship with music was very kind of uh, based on what was around me at the time and uh, visual imagery as a child uh, was uh, it was television, it wasn't gigs and stuff. I, I, I never started um, uh, going to see bands and performers for myself until I actually got involved um, in doing that myself. Um, well, on that, you've got your guitar 
Uh, you probably went out and bought your own guitar? Um, I think so. Right. <laughs> It's, it's been so long. I've, yeah. I've had a lot of guitars. So you got your first guitar that was yours and wasn't borrowed from a friend. Yeah, I, I, th I think um, actually my first guitar, um, well, my um, great grandmother passed away, and uh, I had some money left to me, and um, I bought a guitar of it, and um, I, I, I think it was, um, I think it was an Ibanez. It was one of those kind of cock rock guitars that you know everyone that listens to Steve Vai and Joe Satrani would have to have in their collection and I'd spent so much time on um, a Spanish guitar with action that that high big massive neck it was like this <laughs> yeah it's like a bass guitar it's like a six string bass guitar neck and um, because I'd, be, I'd been so used to trying to play this damn thing when I got to electric guitar suddenly everything became very easy to play because the, the necks are um, thinner and uh, it was very easy to do stuff. I started getting faster. I started developing chords, uh, finding out what they were called. I got myself a jazz chord book, and I started realizing um, some of the things I'd actually created uh, myself were actually had names and stuff, and they were, you know, um, already known as you know various chords and modes and stuff. So you know, I wasn't the genius I thought I was, you know. <laughs> but um, then I uh, I started getting. Um, more and more into it. And I started doing all the guitar solos and learning things. I think most 16 year old kids, what they do is they, uh, they surround themselves in um, what we listened to at the time. Uh, I remember, like I said about the imagery and stuff, in my teenage years, um, uh, I, I saw a single for Iron Maiden, Holy Smoke. We used to go to Smith's on a Saturday um, morning and uh, there was the computer games, because uh, everybody had a Spectrum or a Commodore 64, and there was the the uh, the um, it wasn't quite CD singles. It was that was just coming out. But it was the cassette singles, and it was great. With there was Iron Maiden and I bought Jewish Priest, and I got those two things, not knowing what the music sounded like, but the imagery. Yet yeah. again, I thought that looks great. I want to have that, and it was either that or um, take that. So I, I ain't having that. And you were drawing macabre imagery separately to all of this as well. Yeah, which also, because I, I, I was still in that frame of mind where I wanted to be an artist, but I think what I think what stopped me was my work experience at school, because I, um, everyone, so, some people wanted to be an engineer, so they'd, um, they'd work at some kind of plant that does something with aircraft or something. Um, some, some people wanted to be into... Um, textiles and stuff and they wanted to spend their life doing that so they work at a carpet factory and then I wanted to be an artist and uh, uh, my work experience they, they, they sent me to somewhere called Seven Side Day Centre which was a, a nursery for, for kids and there was nothing wrong with the place but it was like uh, there was nothing for me to do I guess of yeah be creative with the kids and d draw, draw some stuff with them and make animals I'm thinking do you know what, I'd rather be uh, in this class than actually um, trying to give these kids something. You know, I'm, I'm not very good at that. Yeah, and uh, I, um, I think it dawned on me that there aren't many jobs in art. And I, I think I have to be realistic, and though, though I say realistic, I sure got, you know, I'm going to be an accountant or sell insurance or something, but no, I'm going to be a rock star. <laughs> that was the answer. I'm going to buy a guitar, and uh, that's you know I got my guitars, and I sp spent my time playing that. And I started using the drum machine. What were your parents like during all this time when you were sort of going, "I want to be a rock star. I want to be an artist." Were they supportive? <laughs> <laughs> they were furious <laughs> because um, well they weren't they weren't furious. I think they were more disappointed, which is worse <laughs> because I'd spent. You know, to them, I'd spend my entire life telling them, I'm going to be an artist, I'm going to do this, and um, I'm going to, I don't know, paint pictures which will one day be talked about. I actually nailed it for me, because I, I'd started a band uh, with uh, some people at high school, and it was one of those bands which were typical of that uh, era, where we all wore Metallica t-shirts, um, we all kind of played Metallica songs, and we, we'd try writing a song and it would sound like a bad version of a Metallica song <laughs> and we all dressed like Metallica <laughs> and I think basically everyone in the band was Metallica <laughs> in their own minds uh, whether they admit that or not, even me, I, I, I 
probably thought I was James Hetfield, but a kind of skinnier, spottier, less talented version. <laughs> uh, scrawny teenager with... Um, and at the time, I think I'd upgraded to a pink BC Rich, which wasn't what James Hetfield would play, but it just seemed cool. Um, so I was doing all this kind of stuff, and um, but I was still... Um, realising I wanted to do something with all this art experience. I went to uh, Kidminster College uh, to do an art course uh, after I left school and I was on it for about a month. I was so naive because I, I started doing all this kind of, um, I spent my whole life getting to this point where I leave school, I mean, uh, go into the, the world to do art. I realised, well, I'm going to go to college first, did that, and then they said to me, um, after about two weeks, uh, I kind of had the shock of my life where they said to me, yeah, uh, uh, that, that what you're doing there, Nick, it's very good, uh, but we're going to get rid of those drawing pens you've got. You know, that's like taking away um, Dirty Harry's Magnum, and he says, you've got to go catch cops about your, your, your mm -hmm. gun. And I was like, what, 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 what do you mean? Well, 80% of the course is painting. I was like, I can't paint. Five-year-olds could paint better than me. And he goes, don't worry, we're all here to learn stuff. I, go, I don't want to learn. I want to... Well, I, I wanted to learn, but I don't, I don't want to learn that. I wanted to do what I can do well. And uh, that was very, I suppose, pig ended to me, to be honest. And um, I, I realised um, that I'm on a course where I can't actually do what I'm good at. I've got to learn lots of new stuff. And really, I should be a bit more open minded to it and embrace it. I joined the performing arts course. And it was very lucky, to be honest, because this was after about you know a month or so into the. Um, the student year, I managed to switch courses to go into performing arts. I spent most of my uh, most of that week um, explaining to my parents that I was no longer going to be an art student, and I was now um, uh, going to be a performing art arts student. And uh, but that, that didn't go too well. So um, they they were kind of well, you know, you sure you're doing the right thing? And I had to really kind of say to them, well, this is where I want to be. I'm glad I did that. It was one of the best things I ever did, um, decision-wise. And why is that? Mainly because it taught me a lot um, about communicating with people. And um, but saying that, any person that was on that course with me would say I was the most naive, um, scared, um, shy guy there was, and I was very um, inexperienced in talking to people or listening, which is more important, listening. It was, it was, um, it taught me a lot about uh, um, working with musicians.